one, Cole Hires, senior, LSM, Temecula Valley High School, Temecula, California. Number two, Joey Amata, freshman, LSM, Palos Verdes Peninsula High School, Palos Verdes, California. Ethan Deller, senior, midfield, Torrey Pines High School, Del Mar, California. Finn Mayer, six year senior, friend school of Baltimore, Baltimore City, Maryland, defense. I'm Leon Vicola, I'm a freshman, I'm a midi, I'm from Westchester, New York. Number six, Zach Blake, junior, goalie, uh, Hopkins School, Westport, Connecticut. Andrew Bruce Caslow, junior, attack, freshman, number seven, Episcopal High School, from the 703 Fairfax, Virginia. Number eight, uh, freshman, midfield, Alpha Omega Academy, Santa Rosa, California. James Bernicke, sophomore attackman number nine, Champlain Valley Union High School, Shelvin, Vermont. Number 10, Ryan Wang, uh, sophomore, close defense, uh, Redwood High School, Tiburon, California. Number 11, Big Mike, senior, midfield, Coronado High School, Coronado, California. Devin Enos, number 12, sophomore, LSM, St. Ignatius, Mill Valley. Number 14, Henry Perkins, freshman, midfield, St. Paul School, Baltimore, Maryland. Number 15, Cooper Endicott, junior, midfielder, 10th Street Preschool, Los Angeles, California. Number 16, Jake Kostotnik, midfield and attack, Sierra Canyon High School, Los Angeles, California. Number 17, Marshall Wiesner, junior, short stick defensive midi, uh, Paso Robles High School, Paso Robles, California. Number 18, Doroas, sophomore, attack, Apple Valley High School, Apple Valley MN. Number 19, Ethan Pavlet, sophomore, close defense, Paula High School, Monterey, California. Number 20, uh, Brendan Cook, fifth year senior, attack, uh, uh, Seton Hall Prep, Chatham, New Jersey. Number 21, Andrew Harris, I'm a senior, goalie, from St. Andrew's Episcopal School in Potomac, Maryland. Number 22, Andrew Page, senior, defense, Otay Ranch High School, Chula Vista, California. Number 23, Morgan Brower, freshman, midfield, Whitefish Bay High School, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Number 25, Maka Dingus, senior, defense, Granite Bay, California. Number 27, Devin Koval, Jr., Defensive Midi, Long Beach Poly High School. <laughs> Number 30, Rahil Sheikh, I'm a freshman, goalie, DuPont Manual High School from Louisville, Kentucky. Jack Ronan, Senior, Midfield, Monta Vista High School, Danville, California. Number 33, Jabwejin, Senior Midfielder, San Marcos High School in Santa Barbara, California. Number 34, Justin Radati. I'm a senior. Um, I would play attack. I went to Summit High School in Bend, Oregon. I'm number 40, Dawson Hill, a junior playing midfield, and I went to Torrey Pines High School from San Diego. Sophomore midfield, number 41, Junior Paris High School, San Mateo. Uh, number 42, Jacob Steensma. I'm a junior attackman and uh, from Francis Parker School in San Diego, California. Number 44, Ty Wolver, freshman Fogo from Granite Bay High School, Granite Bay, California. Number 45, Ty Chesla, senior attack, Atlantic Community High School, Delray Beach, Florida. Joe Sonsini, number 50, from Sacred Heart Prep, Menlo Park, California. Number 51, Flynn Gray, sophomore, defense, Sean Road High School, from Point Lookout, New York, Long Island. Number 55, Zach Lima, graduate student, Seen All Prep, New Jersey, defense. Connor Zakar, sophomore midfielder from Crested Butte, Colorado, and the Salisbury School. Wait. Number 99, Isaac Schultz, sophomore, LSM, La Jolla High School, San Diego, California. Ethan Rowe, number two, midfield, second year, Ashburn, Virginia, Broward High School. My name is Finn Chorak. I am a senior attackman. I went to Akalani's High School in Lafayette, California. 
Now, Noah Azevedo, senior attackman, Miramani High School, Orinda, California. Jake Knowles, senior attackman, Palos Verdes, California, Palos Verdes High School. Jackson Gilmore, face off, senior, Burlingham High School from Burlingham, California. Sawyer Esseboy, number eight, senior, position attack, hometown Orinda, California, high school, Miramani High School. Niels Nicholson, number nine, sophomore, midfielder, hometown Annapolis, Maryland, and address again. Jake Brennan, number 10, junior, uh, based off of midfield, single bend in California, Vista Mar Elementary School. Chase Trinidad, number 11, first year midfielder from Chula Vista, California, East Lake High School. Riker Bergstein, number 12, second year midfielder, Santa Monica, California, Palisades High School. Lucas Fernandez, number 13, attack, Maricosa High School, Manhattan Beach, California. Cameron Dwelly, 16, first year, midfielder, Sacramento, California, and Jesuit High School. Ashton Wong, number 18, freshman attack, Liberal Arts and Science Academy in Austin, Texas. Andrew Smith, junior goalie, uh, San Diego, California. Miles Park, number 21. Second year defenseman, Del Norte High School, San Diego, California. Brandon Casey, 22. Third year LSM, Carolinda, California. Adrian Becerra, number 24. Second year midfield, Irvine, California, back in high school. Jackson Blue, first year LSM, San Benito High School, Falls California. Isaac Baker, number 26. Senior midfielder, hometown, Portland, Oregon. Lincoln High. Vance Sign, Senior Defense, Vista Marietta High School, Marietta, California. Jacob Gomez, Junior, Midfield, Carlsbad High, Carlsbad, California. Will Thomas, First Year Midfielder, Palo Alto, California, Palo Alto High School. Tegan Smith, 31, Third Year Midfielder, California, Wood Creek High School. Patrick Goff, Second-year LSM, Long Beach Poly, California. Ryan Fisk, junior, midfield, UCSB, Davis High, Davis, California. Sasha Boorman, 36, attack, junior, Los Angeles, California, New West Charter High School. Connor Fellows, Long Beach, California, number 38, uh, Wilson High School, midfield. Zen Chang. Uh, defense and LSM, uh, Las Vegas, Bay Lutheran High School, Go Crusaders. Shows of UC Santa Barbara and the Golden Bears from California, along with Chris Nespor, Cal Poly Lacrosse Hall of Famer. I'm Scott Armstrong. Nice to have you with us. And Chris, set for us the scene of this matchup between the Bears and the Gauchos. Uh, these two teams know each other well. The Bears, the favorite. And how do you see it coming into today's action in this first semifinal? Absolutely, Scott. Uh, we got a good one here tonight. Uh, today. Uh, you know, last time these guys played, it was the first game of the season for Santa Barbara. It was the second game of the season for Cal. And so both teams were pretty fresh. You know, didn't know much about each other. And obviously we're at the end of the season here and there's plenty of scout film to watch. They know what the other team's going to bring. Um, and I'm excited for a well-tuned matchup. We got two coaches who, you know, they've been friends since they're five years old. Uh, and they know each other well. These teams know each other well. I, I expect a battle after a two-goal game last time. Yep, Ned Webster of the Bears, Mike Allen of the Gauchos, Baltimore natives, and you, know, you certainly have your connections in lacrosse. You say, well, I've known this guy all my life. Does that uh, play into it psychologically when you come into the crunch time like this? I, I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. You know, obviously you want your team to win, but you also want to beat your friend. Uh, and there's, mm -hmm. there's something uh, something to that. You know, you get to hold it over them, a little bit of uh, bragging rights. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, you're here for your team. Uh, it's, it's fun to coach against a friend, uh, but it's even more fun to coach a, a team that you enjoy coaching. No question. Our second semifinal pit, Santa Clara against Cal Poly. The winner of these two games here today at Dominican advanced to tomorrow's final. And California coming in ranked 10th in the country in the final regular season poll. And you see Santa Barbara ranked 24th. We will be stepping aside for just a moment for the national anthem coming up. There you see the brackets. And, of course, we also have uh, an early game tomorrow on Sunday as UC Davis faces UC Santa Cruz in the Division II championship. Uh, we hope you'll stick with us here all weekend long on Team Stream Greens. Nice to be with this crew once again. And uh, the conditions here at Dominican, high 60s here on the turf, feels maybe low 70s. I would say these are ideal playing conditions. Would you agree? Yeah, you know, traditionally this tournament's been played up at Novato High School, and it's been a, a hot, hot field there. You know, I'm talking mid-90s, um, especially when you work in the turf. So it's it's nice to be at a cooler location. You get a little bit of breeze coming off the bay. I think this is a, a perfect lacrosse weather. So we move toward the initial face-off after the National Anthem. You saw the team intros, and we appreciate our crew getting those together to introduce you to the Golden Bears and to the Gauchos. For folks who may not have seen these two teams play before, uh, perhaps go a little bit into first the style of the Gauchos and what they'll try to do today against the favored Bears. Maybe they start with the Gauchos first. Uh, yeah, sure. I was talking to uh, Cal's coach Ned Webster before the game, and he was just commenting on, on how Santa Barbara likes to move the ball a lot. Um, their guys tend to know their roles. Um, and when that happens, you get a disciplined team, um, and you get a team that's like, maybe going to possess the ball. I think you'll see a, a good amount of that. Though at the same time, uh, Santa Barbara did score a good amount in transition last time. Um, so when you're the, the lower seeded team, sometimes you want to bring the energy uh, and, and push a, push the ball a little bit more. On the other end, for for Cal, uh, they are a team that traditionally they have a very very strong offense. They had they bring back two players, which uh, you know Jake Pistotnik and Brendan Cook, both those guys. Name, uh, name an offensive award, and they've probably won. So look for 16 and 20 in white to take over this game. Uh, it looks like we're going to step aside for the national anthem here. All right, our national anthem here at Dominican. Uh, for those of you perhaps unfamiliar with the geography of this campus, it's right off Highway 101, short drive from the Golden Gate Bridge. And again, excellent weather here in the Bay Area, which can be kind of topsy-turvy these days, thanks climate change. Uh, but we've got Cal and UC Santa Barbara coming up here shortly. Name for us maybe a couple players on each side of semifinal number one that you'd be looking for. Sure. So I already mentioned 16, uh, Jake Pistotnik. He's a he's second team WCLL uh, attackman this year. Uh, and then, of course, 20, Brennan Cook. Uh, he's a captain for the, the Cal Bears there. First team uh, WCLL attack this year. Both those guys running the offense. Um, on the defensive end, watch out for 25, uh, McAvoy, Ryan McAvoy, um, as well as number four, Finn Mayer. Uh, both those guys run that defense, they run a tight ship. Um, on the Santa Barbara end, uh, guys to look out for, uh, number six, Jake Knowles, he's one of the captains. He's also a second team uh, attackman this year. Um, and I would say uh, their face-off guy, Jake Brannon, number 10, uh, you know, well, he takes face-offs. He's, he's a contributor on offense as well. Um, look out for him. Uh, and then uh, another midi 26, Isaac Baker, uh, will be a party starter for the Gauchos. There you have it in. Brandon's a math major at Santa Barbara. I know you'd appreciate that. Definitely you know? do. Yeah. <laughs> this is perfect. We have a math instructor and an English major. There you right go. Here. So we've, we've got everything covered. 
<laughs> today's broadcast. So, two teams uh, checking each other out uh, just before the start. And you were a long stick midfielder and a very successful one. So what would be your mentality coming into a game like this uh, as you move into playoff time? You know, these games are fun. These games are fun. It's postseason. That's all that matters. And, and honestly, listening to that national anthem, you know, you start getting the jitters a little bit. You get the butterflies. And the first thing that matters is that first face off. You know, maybe you're, you're feeling a little nervous and you're on the wing here and you just go in. You got to secure that ball for your team and, and let your offense go to work. Cal sends out 44, Ty Wolber out of Granite Bay, and an excellent faceoff percentage for him. Looks like number 10, uh, maybe 7. Number 7, Jackson Gilmore taking the faceoff for the Gauchos. And we got a ground ball scrum right away. And that's 12, Devin Enos coming out with it. It's going to be Golden Bear ball. We'll get our first line middies on here. We got 11 running on. That's Micah Grimm, uh, first team WCLL MIDI this year, uh, with, running with number eight, Connor Zakar. Both those guys, Coach Webster tells me to watch out for. Zakar wants to dodge right away. Hard dodge down the alley. It stings one far pipe. Great start for the Bears. Yeah, couldn't ask for a better start there. And, and he comes right onto the field and he makes an impact. And that's probably just the way they drew it up, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Connor Zakar, you listed at 6'4, 220. And he looks bigger than that. 88, that is a big fellow there. <laughs> An imposing figure, and he scores the first goal of the day here at Dominican. Rushing directly in from the right. Really not getting a lot of resistance. Back at the faceoff dot, same matchup. Wilbur comes out with it. Smartly dishes back to the defense. So Santa Barbara, one goal behind already. Think they're going to try to do anything different, or they're just trying to keep their eyes open? I don't think so. It's a long game. It's a game of runs here, and and really one goal doesn't mean too much here. But you definitely want to stop. You don't want to give a Cal any more momentum. We've got line one middies coming back on for the Bears. Um, part of that line one also Henry Perkins out of Sparks, Maryland. That car is going for two mm. straight goals. He's got the first two of the day for the Golden Bears. I think you want to slide to that guy. Uh, so he's gone down the right alley. He's gone down the left alley. Zachar, a little bit of do-it-all. Santa Barbara appears to be sending out a new man for the face-off against Wolber, who has uh, taken the first two. Watching that replay, not much of a slide from Santa Barbara there. I think maybe Berkeley's doing a good job of pulling the hot man. But uh, I think we want to go early to 88. And Wolber wins it, even though they sent in Jake Brandon, who you mentioned is their main faceoff guy. And so now they're going to control from the back. Uh, I think I did misspoke, misspeak there. It's uh, seven. Jackson Gilmore is their main guy. Brandon, sure. obvi obviously their uh, change of pace. Good clear from the Bears there. Micah Grimm brings it down. Nice methodical job by the defense to get that ball across the midline. Of course, this year, well, not this year, but new rule, 80-second uh, shot clock. you got 20 seconds to get it across the midline, which is a lot more time than it sounds. Uh, here comes that car again right off the crossbar. Finally came down. Mm. Henry Perkins lets it fly off the assist from, I believe, that was Cook in the, at the, the back left there. Now Cal, 3 nothing lead. Santa Barbara calls a timeout, and those timeout whistles, when you're wearing white, when you're up, that's a good sound. That amps you up. Look at the carom here, and uh, down there in the corner appeared to be Micah Grimm, who picked it up and fed mm -hmm. teammate Perkins for the score. And that's a good job of what they call ground ball offense there. You know, not necessarily ground ball there. It comes out of the air, but when the ball is not in someone's stick, you, you win possession, you want to move that ball quickly, um, as the defense is trying to rotate and figure out where the ball is. Uh, if you move it quick, you attack the other side, often good things happen. How do you coach that when it comes off the pipes? Because, you know, it will happen, but sometimes it's not going to take a carom directly up in the air like a fly ball in baseball. Yeah, it's a tough thing to coach. I think, you know, a lot of it, not to cop out here, but a lot of it is just being at the right place at the right time. <laughs> and some guys know how to do it and others don't. Um, and there, Micah Grimm, who, you know, that guy, he's a senior. He's been playing for a long time here. Um, for Berkeley, and he tracked that ball down no problem and was able to get the assist. 
as you were mentioning before we came on air, these two teams got together in February and Cal took away a 16 to 14 victory. And so the teams have seen each other before. Obviously Santa Barbara now having to climb back from a three goal deficit and they would just like to get something started in the offensive end. Yeah, I'd like to see them get the ball. You know, Cal's been on, on offense here the whole time. So if you're Santa Barbara, you're just saying we need one stop, calm down. This game is still well within reach. Um, and they win the, the face off there, or at least the clamp. They're going to get a push call here, so we're going to get to see Santa Barbara at least uh, clear the ball. Brandon was able to win it there and then win the foul. We got a clear starting at the back end. That's 29, Jacob Gomez with the ball. Dishes it to his midfielder, and we're across the midline. Santa Barbara's going to sub on their first midfield. Looks like 26, Isaac Baker, who was highlighted. Baker, a first-team WCLO midi. He's running with number two, Ethan Rowe, and 16, Camden Dwelly. And Baker out of Lincoln High School in Portland, Oregon. That's a beautiful campus. It's in the northeast of Portland, not too far from the Portland airport. Rowe going for a run down the alley. Going to push it back to X there for Flynn Chorak. Chorak marked by 55 um, for Berkeley there. That's Zach Lima. Baker trying to make something happen. Uh, feed, over, feed in there to Jake Knowles with a nice save from, from Berkeley's keeper. That's Zach Blake. Knowles with a well-timed cut. I think his angle was a little bit off there, and Blake just took up a lot of the cage. Still, if you're Santa Barbara, you have to feel good about building an attack and getting a decent shot from close in. 100%. Yeah, shot on cage, make the goalie make a save. You know, team make them make the plays. We got a free runner for Berkeley. They can't find him. Bench is yelling for offsides here. He may have an argument. Pistotnik with the ball. Dishing over to Ethan Deller. In his left. Back to Cook, who's able to rally, wrangle up the ground ball. Jack Ronan dishes over. Nice save. Mm. Cleaning up the garbage. That's number nine, James Bernicki. We were talking earlier before the game, Bernicki, uh, a guy, he's listed six foot, 210 there, 23 goals, two assists. So he's someone who, another, one of those guys who knows where to be at the right time. Um, and he picks up the deflected shot, is able to put it home. So my count, Perkins has one, Bernicki has one in, Zakar, as we saw, has the first two. So Cal scoring the first four of the early morning here. We start 11 a.m. local time. Clean face-off win for uh, for Wolbert there. Ty Wolbert, first team WCLL face-off specialist, and he's showing it today. And it's really, <laughs> it's really tilted the scales in favor of Cal so far. Dominance at the face-off. Cal with a little advantage out of the, the clearing game. And a mishandled pass there, but it looks like they're going to come out of it. That's seven. Andrew Caslow pulling up the ground ball. And Cal's going to settle into their offense. But here's Zachar. He doesn't want to settle. They are stepping to him now. That's what you're going to have to do. They do have a shorty on Zachar. That's a matchup you like if you're Berkeley. Brendan Cook dishes, and the shot goes wide from 14. Henry Perkins. Cal gets the backup. Of note, Santa Barbara has a freshman in goal. That's Kevin Shavodian out of Menlo Park. An M.A. Bear. Micah Grimm looking to dodge with his left. Finds Perkins, falls on the ground. That was kicked over by Santa Barbara and a heavy, heavy check. And we got a stick on the ground, first one of the day. That's 25, Ryan McAvoy, who Ned Webster calls maybe their best defender. Able to get the yard sale check and get the ball back to the Bears. Better defensive possession there from Santa Barbara. They're crashing on the feeds. Uh, Berkeley looking to skip through the defense a little bit more. Um, and Santa Barbara doing a good job of coming down on the, the receiver. 
think Santa Barbara is in the zone right now. Perkins bounces one home. And that's what you want to do against the zone. You find the weak spots, you make them pass off, and you pass right back to it. You see them pass off right there. That tells you it's a zone. And that shorty just comes down a little too much. Creates that room for Perkins and a well-placed bounce shot. Perkins with the second of the day. Yeah, five nothing early. As you say, long game, a lot of the cross left to be played. There's a lot, but if you're Santa Barbara here, you uh, you want one. I don't want this hole to get too deep. You know, these teams play each other close in February, at the start of the season, as you know. Teams Ooh. can be different. A little kayak check there from Devin Enos, trying to make something happen with the butt end of his stick. Off the face off there, that's a great ground ball from Miles Park for Santa Barbara. Securing possession, and, and we got the Gaucho ball. Really, really want a, a good possession here. You're playing a lot of defense, so you know with the shot clock, you, you only have a certain number of time here, a certain amount of time. But if you can get quality shots, Maybe hit the goalie, hit a pipe, get a, a couple possessions, but ball's on the ground again, and here comes a swarming Bears defense. Yeah, fortunate for Baker to lose it right there. Ball still down. Body's hitting the floor. Twenty-five. Ryan McAvoy again with the ground ball, dishes it over to Lima. Gaucho is doing a good job of retreating to defense to stop the break. Junior LSM, Dawson Hill getting what I think is the, the first reps here of his day. Um, definitely in a little bit of a 3-3 zone. Let's see how Kyle adjusts. Pass up to Caslow, marked by the shorty. Feed down to Cook. Shots outside. Santa Barbara will look to clear. Shavodian with a good job tracking that ball and, and finding it after it hits the outside of the cage. He's harassed a little bit and gets the ball back safely to his close defender. Good yeah. job of reversing field. Yeah, that pass came in back over his back shoulder and he had to quickly adjust to move to the other side of the cage. Captain Jack, uh, Jake Brandon, excuse me, uh, on the field here. Looks like they're getting uh, some, some subs, maybe their second midfield. That's Trinidad with the ball. Taj in the right alley. Nothing there, and a good job pushing out at X uh, by the Berkeley defense. That's Zach Lima denying the easy pass. Uh, we got a flag down for a hold likely, and then a, a big, big hit on the crease. Clean it up, make sure nothing cheap happens. Notice Bergstein, the 12 shirt for Santa Barbara, was a lot of movement there in the offensive zone, trying to see if he could help out, but Trinidad wanted that all on his own, and he draws the whistle. He has a good job from Trinidad getting under his defender there, um, forcing, we'll see maybe the, the replay here. Uh, getting under the defender, forcing him to, to have his stick at an awkward angle. Often you get a hold off that. So we're going to look at Gaucho's man up here. First flag of the day. Dwelly's going to start with it. Coming out in the 2-3-1 set. A little bit of movement. It was Santa Rosa's Isaac Jara, the number eight for California, who drew the penalty. Baker up top, gets a look, sends it high. Middle of the field, 14 yards, decent look. And you can hear a penalty releasing, but you're not quite even yet. There's three or four seconds after that penalty releases where you're still man up. Um, and then Santa Barbara takes a shot, retains possession, works it up to Isaac Baker. Baker working with Dwelly up top. Up to Rowe. Oh, good feed, couldn't handle it there. 
Cal looking for a quick transition, and then they throw it away, so it'll stay Gaucho ball. You know, Dawson Hill who picked it up there. Santa Barbara, you want to take advantage of that man up, and, and uh, that's got to be tough. I mean, this is this way empty. Absolutely. This is what you want, right? You asked, you want a long possession. Uh, we had a man-up opportunity. We got a couple good looks. Um, Cal's been playing defense for, you know, over over a minute now, maybe approaching two. Rowe goes for an alley dodge, low angle shot there, and a nice check from, from Cooper Endicott uh, to throw off the shot. But again, Gaucho ball. Cal pushing out hard on, on Camden, or yeah, Camden Dwelly. Uh, able to get the turnover again. Bears defense playing very aggressive. But they throw it away on the clear. That's 13. Menendez able to pick it up. Here's Ethan Rowe. Mm, there's a turnover. It's going to be Berkeley ball. Micah Graham picks it up. He's ready to run, and we got a quick, quick whistle. Good possession from the Gauchos there time-wise. Didn't get many quality shots, though. No, Cal seemed to really tighten up the defense there. Seemed to have an idea what the Gauchos were going to try to do, especially even in man up. Yeah, well scouted. One thing uh, Coach Webster said was the first time they played, they had no scout. It was Santa Barbara's first game, so they've got a full season's worth of film. They know what to expect, and, and clearly they're well coached, disciplined, uh, stopping what, what they know is coming. Good slide from the Gauchos there on, on Brendan Cook, forced a turnover. Santa Barbara appearing to play with more confidence, almost like uh, going behind has sort of loosened them up a little bit. The nerves are gone. They're playing kind of more of their style. Well, it takes a little bit to settle into games, especially when it's postseason and there's a, you know your season is on the line here. Uh, good to see them settle in. Good to see them get some stops. Uh, now we need to see the offense catch up a little bit. Here's 12, Bergstein with the ball. Pushing to Jake Brandon. Quick ball movement, but but uh, the sticks are not there for the Gauchos this morning. Turnover, it'll be Berkeley ball. How much is fatigue a factor at this stage of the season? This stage of the season? I think you're you're tuned up. You're in shape. You've been playing four four quarters for you know, these games what are these guys? They've played fourteen games, thirteen games, so they've they've got plenty of game experience and they are used to it. But you definitely, just with the, the adrenaline and, and the nerves that come with postseason game, you feel it a little bit more. Uh, I think that's what we see here in the first quarter. We'll settle in, just like any, any postseason game. You settle in a little bit, um, and we'll start seeing these guys really get uh, well-tuned. But I'd say fatigue-wise, these guys are ready to play. Good feed inside of Pistotnik. Nice save from the keeper there. Again, that's 17, Kevin Shvodian. Shvody and a freshman goalie from MA uh, played against him at his high school there and he uh, he gave us some terrors there in a couple games when the Bears played Los Gatos last year. Good cross feed from Rowe, unable to connect. You see Santa Barbara pushing, you know, they, they're down five, they want to make it happen. There's no such thing as a five point goal. So they just really need to, uh, to take their time and, and find the right shots and, and possess the ball. Psychologically, it would be better if, if the next goal belongs to the Gauchos. 5 one's a whole lot different than 6 nothing. We got a new midfield line coming on for the Bears. But Brandon Cook says, nah, I'm going to take it myself. Doesn't connect on the skip. And that's Ryan Fisk coming down the field. Elects not to push the four on three. Maybe a smart decision there. Not too much of a step, and we want to uh, control the ball. Menendez working at X. Going against Finn Mayer. Finn Mayer, a very decorated defender for the, the Cal Bears. Uh, the third time uh, in his career that he's been first team WCLL. And he's an honorable mention All American last time they did those. Oh, and the Gauchos able to put one in. That's number six. Jake Knowles, captain for the Gauchos. Uh, able to get back to the middle with his right hand and put it past the Bears keeper. 
So fitting that their leader is the first one to score. And as you just said, 5-1 looks a lot better than 6 nothing. Good job of getting back to his inside hand there, shooting around the slide a little bit. I think maybe the keeper was screened, but uh, shot placement from the middle of the field, that's what you want to see. Santa Barbara comes up with possession and a little bit of an errant pass from the pole there. Good idea, but uh, not able to, to control it and put it on his teammate. It's going to be Berkeley ball. And they'll have the last possession if they choose as the uh, shot clock and the game clock uh, would deem it so if they want to hold for the last shot. They can do that. Would you do that? I think I would here. There's no reason to push it. You're up 5-1. You want to make it 6-1 at the end of the quarter. You got a little bit of advantage out of the sub box here. But Perkins unable to handle. You do have your line one midfielders, and Perkins goes for one, going high over the crossbar. You got 20 seconds left. I think you got your Berkeley. You got a couple set plays that take around 20 seconds. You like attacking this time. The clock on your screen and the clock on the scoreboard here at Dominican may not quite match up, so there will be a few seconds left remaining. Feed to the crease for Pistonic. He puts it high. 10 seconds. Enough time. Enough time for one more shot. I think I want to get it to Zachar here. Oh, good check. Pops the ball loose. We're going to get a token attempt, but it's not going to fall. And that'll be the end of the first quarter here in San Rafael. Bears five. Gauchos one. Mentioned the Bears uh, favored to go through uh, in the remainder of this bracket throughout the weekend. And uh, that first quarter uh, sort of held the form. They... They took it to the Gauchos at the very beginning, but then the game seemed to even out. Yeah, you, when you start the game, you know, the the team that's favored has a, has a little bit more confidence. The, the underdogs, the Gauchos here in this situation, um, feel the pressure more. And I think we saw that with the, 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 the throwaways, especially when they start pouring in the goals. But uh, overall, the second half of that first quarter, much better for the Gauchos and much better for the fans watching as far as competition goes. But just logging on the scorers in the first quarter for California. Connor Zakar got the first two goals of the morning, the number 88, and then a goal for Henry Perkins, a freshman out of Maryland. The fourth scorer was James Bernicke. He's from Champlain Valley uh, in Virginia, and uh, or I beg your pardon, Vermont. I know my postal abbreviations. You'd think I'd know that by now. And, uh, of course, uh, the final score of the first quarter for the California Golden Bears was Perkins again. So two for Perkins, two for Zachar, one for Bernicke. And then uh, last uh, but not least for UCSB, uh, you had Jake Knowles finally getting on the scoreboard after Santa Clara had built some – I'm sorry, Santa Barbara had built some good possessions. Didn't get a lot of good shots, as you were saying, but they finally broke through. Mm -hmm. I think uh, – and that's important. That's big that you get one in the first quarter. You have some success to come back on. Um, and it, it seems like the, the Santa Barbara zone that they've dropped into here is throwing, throwing California for a loop. So I know the coach is going to have some adjustments here, and they'll be ready for it. Curious to see if Santa Barbara maintains that zone or if they come back to, uh, to their man-to-man -man defense. Uh, we're not tracking assists here. I would be curious. I, I would think just watching, um, you know, the first three goals at least are just alley dodges, putting it on cage. Um, and then there was the one deflected goal as well. So... You know, Cal is scoring, uh, but if Santa Barbara can slide and make them w work the ball around, I think that's how you're going to um, limit their chances is you got to stop that initial dodge. Of course, the winner of uh, this weekend's tournament will get the automatic qualifier to the MCLA tournament in Round Rock, Texas. Uh, right now, Cal, the one seed, they seem they're the favorites for that AQ. Um, if another team can, can pull out an upset, um, then, then Cal would be in the conversation for an at-large bid. Uh, but we've got a trip to Texas on the line. As you were saying before we came on air, if California is not the team that goes through and uh, two teams come out of the WCLL for the Round Rock uh, tournament, then that could potentially crowd out another at-large bid elsewhere in the country. Yeah, and you saw that happen, um, or, or presumably you see that happen in the SLC where uh, for anyone tracking league games uh, in other divisions, Grand Canyon upset number two Concordia Irvine last night. They'll be playing for the SLC um, title, and, and Concordia is going to take one of those AQs for sure. So we've got 
Uh, spots in the tournament being filled. Good collision in the air. Santa Barbara able to come up with it. That's 22. Brennan Casey. This is the start you want if you're the Gauchos. They want the ball to stay on that side of the field. Settle into our first line midfield. Again, that's Ethan Rowe. Isaac Baker. And Camden Dwelly. See a lot of right-handed alley dodges here. Good one from Rowe there, able to create separation and draw a slide. You can move it quickly to the back side. Nothing doing. Chorak holding the ball. Gonna dodge the shorty from behind. Work it back up to the middies. Rowe's gonna have a run here. Alex to pass down. Lucas Menendez wants a dodge, puts it in his left, draws a slide. Great slide there from Finn Mayer. Timer at 10. And there's a, a little bit of a, a last ditch attempt there from Jake Knowles as the shot clock is expiring. They're gonna dump it to the corner and set up their ride. Tough one, you get the win to start the period and you use the whole shot clock and it just wasn't a lot there. I think you gotta be happy with that possession though. You're, you're getting looks, you're drawing slides. Uh, you're, again, you're still you're getting comfortable in your offensive set. Uh, better job of actually drawing the slide in that possession in the first quarter. You know, they, they weren't as much. They were getting marked up uh, with the one-on-one -on -one and that slide was not necessarily needed. Micah Grimm with the ball in the right alley. Up to Perkins, over to Zakar. Zakar with the shorty. Yeah, Santa Barbara still in the zone. Good job passing around it. Perkins with the shot. Lefty pulls it near side. Sorry, that was Micah Grimm with the shot. California in a 1-4-1 a one one set here to try and uh, counter the zone. Big skip pass up to the middle. And a big check from Santa Barbara there. That's 22. Uh, Brendan Casey there getting a lot of body, putting him on the ground, and we got a fast break. Casey well familiar with this area as he went to high school right down the street at Terra Linda just across the highway. Big, big save. Zach Blake with a massive save with the shot from the, the Gauchos there. I thought that one was going in. And on the other side, we got a long pull shot and another save. The Cal Bench wants a push there, uh, but it's going to retain uh, Gaucho possession, remain Gaucho possession. Bernicke was the player in question. I think he came up and gained the ground, but uh, they didn't get the whistle. Uh, I'm not sure what the call is here, but the Bears throw it away. Jake Brannon. This is to the middle. Jake Knowles finds, oh my goodness, two quick saves on Lucas Menendez by Berkeley's keeper there. That was athletic. Zach Blake preventing probably two or three goals here in the last minute. Well, Santa Barbara's come with their best to start the second period. Blake has been equal to the task. He's been ready for whatever they want to bring down to the cage. Rowe, Baker, and Dwelly for the Gauchos. Rowe shifty, got a good split dodge and uh, draws the early slide. Wants to probably get rid of it here. You don't want to hold on to the ball too, too much. But he finds his teammate, Flynn Chorak, cutting nice, nice cut up the crease. Uh, to cut the deficit to four goals. Good patience there from Ethan Rowe, trying to find the correct angle. He took the check and did not allow that to throw him off his stride, finding his teammate inside. It was a great cut from the, the goal scorer there, Flynn Chorak. He saw his defender turn his helmet to find him. He cuts right behind him. 
be able to find himself open on the crease. I have to say Santa Barbara has had the better of the play in the opening few minutes of this second period. They've uh, put a lot of pressure on Blake, and then they uh, get the combination to score the first goal of the quarter. And my apologies there. The deficit is obviously three. Math major. Can't do math. Well, it's because the English major sitting next to you. It's, uh, I'm, I'm dragging the crew down. Yeah, we talked a bunch about Cal getting to six, and I've had that in my head. 5-2. Five, 5-2 two. Five, two, Cal after the goal from the Gauchos. Well, you're a coach. You're always thinking ahead. You know, we, we, we like that. That's why we have you on the broadcast. It's okay. Stepping in from deep. Ethan Deller, big, big shot. It's going to keep the uh, California ball after the chase to the sideline. Pistotnik marine it in. Good ball movement from the Bears. Great ball movement from the Bears. Seven. That's Andrew Caslow looking for a twister finish. Brunicki with the ball behind. Popping from the crease. Cook behind. Shavodian seemed very calm in goal so far for the Gauchos, even after that big deficit was racked up early. Mm, good feed inside. That's number seven. Andrew Caslow with the finish. I believe there's 20, Brennan Cook with the assist, and this is just a good job from the Bears of bouncing that ball, moving it quick, getting it to X, and then uh, you know firing it right into the crease. Good cut from Caslow. And the goalie seems screened there also on the shot that found the top corner. Yeah, when you got two guys on the crease like the Bears are doing right now, you know it's good against the zone because it, it makes defenders share uh, multiple responsibilities. And when you got guys cutting in opposite directions, you got to pick one of them. Um, and there, you know, one of them's open. One of those cuts is open. Santa Barbara wins the faceoff, pushing fast break. Nothing doing. Falls over to Chorak. Dwelly holding for possession as we get our, our midfield back on. Santa Barbara's line one midi is getting a lot of run here early in the game. Let's see how that affects them come fourth quarter. Yeah, warm day, but not oppressively hot. Probably going to be hotter in the afternoon game given the turf and the conditions. Rowe able to handle the pass. Gets back to his right hand. Ooh, that was a great feed and a nice handle from, from Flynn Chorak there on the crease. Ethan Rowe, again, showing off his, his split dodge there. Very shifty. Sends the left-handed shot high. Also the first time we've had some significant wind on the field in this game. The crease is there for the Gauchos, and that's a save. That's going to reset the shot clock. More saves from the Bears keeper. Zach Blake standing on his head currently. Big ground ball, Jake Knowles. That's why he's a captain. Should have a, a, a relatively fresh shot clock. They did just reset. Menendez going to go from X here again. Pushes on the crease. Knowles trying to go for a, a quick stick finish. He gets knocked in. It's going to be a, a cow possession. Lima with the ball. Finds Isaac Jaro, who has the ball checked away from him. That's 22, Brendan Casey, causing a turnover in the midfield, and we've got numbers. Good skip. Mm, just pushes it wide. Jake Knowles, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, unable to finish. He's very frustrated. He's been right there the last two times down for the Gauchos, and nothing to show for it. Yeah, they, as a team, they are right there. You know, keeper uh, Blake, again, doing a very good job of making these saves. If you're Santa Barbara, you just have to find the, the open net. There's more open net than there is uh, goalie. Game really has come back to even in a competitive sense. It just doesn't show that on the scoreboard at this point. Lefty shot over the pipe uh, on that dodge from X there from Menendez. They were just joining us, Cal took a 5-0 lead in the first quarter before Santa Barbara scored their first. It was 5-1 at the end of the first in favor of Cal. Brandon working from X, finds his teammate Jake Knowles. 
early slide. Nice check from the Bears. I think that's kicked out by Berkeley. It's gonna be Santa Barbara ball. Menendez working from X. This has been good for them. He's getting the dodge and goes for an underhand shot and no backup there. I think that's gonna be Cal Ball. They say the ball went out after the guy dove, um, so it'll stay with the Gauchos. Trinidad thought about a shot for a second, finds Knowles, puts it wide. That time there's no backup, and it's going to go to the Bears. Yeah, we're not tracking uh, this. We got some confusion back go here. We got one ref pointing. It's the Bears ball. Gauchos picked it up, and they figured it out. That'll happen once in a while. I was going to ask, it seems to me in terms of quality offensive trips, the Gauchos have actually done better so far in this game. If they, uh, yeah, I mean, they're getting, their their possessions are nice and long, and they're, they're putting shots on cage, right? Baker, or Blake, excuse me, making the saves, keeping, really keeping Cal with their comfortable lead. But if you're the Bears here, good possession. That's a long, long defensive stand. Mm-hmm. Good to see Zachar back out there and, and looking healthy. He took a big hit last time the Bears were on this end. Graham wants a shot off the goalie's foot. Shot clock did reset there, so we were 80 seconds. Cook getting into the body of his defender. Steps on the crease there. 29, Jacob Gomez uh, drawn a tough assignment on Brendan Cook, as I mentioned earlier, very decorated. And Gomez, uh, you know, talking to Coach Allen, he just picked up a long pole two games ago. Uh, they've had some injuries on their defense, and so he's a short stick D midi with the pole. Um, looking good right there. When it comes down to it, it's footwork. Uh, so good job standing up, Cook. Gaucho ball, Gaucho possession. Let's see if they can get it. my guess. We'll possess it. We'll get our guys. We'll initiate from X again. That seemed to, been, uh, seemed to be their move. Of course, we got Rowe. Wants to dodge from up top. And gets the back check there. Chorak behind. Good D from Mayer. Turns him back inside. Dwelly with dodge. Ooh, good save on a high shot from Dwelly. It's going to be a battle for this ground ball. And a big, big ground ball from Jake Knowles there. And uh, Coach Allen calls a timeout to secure possession. That's why he's a captain there. That is a greedy play um, to, to come up with that ground ball with two poles bearing down on you in the corner. Uh, it takes a lot of effort and, and uh, gusto to get that ball. And as you were saying earlier in the first half, you know, some players have the instinct to pull off that play and some don't. Ah, yeah, I mean, he, yeah, I think he, he picked that ball up and he's turning up field. It's probably something that's happened earlier in the year. Uh, but, you know, postseason, season on the line, you got to come up with that ball, and he did there. Coach Allen uses one of his two timeouts uh, to bail, not, not to bail his uh, team, uh, player, but to uh, secure possession and, and keep him from getting beat up too much. Did this stat mean anything to you? Let me know. The scoreboard here at Dominican shows that the Gauchos have 13 shots in this first half and California has 12. It's sort of a, a rough barometer of the fact that uh, the two teams have had some productive trips, but as you said, the Bears have played very good defense in those long trips for the Gauchos. Yeah, and, and you know the 13 shots is surprising given the score, um, but just tells you just how good of a game Zach Blake is having in cage for the Bears. Um, what that puts him at 11 saves right now. Um, which usually 11 saves, that's a, a pretty good tally for an entire game, and we're you know, four minutes left in the second quarter. Now, Mom is from New Haven, so is Zach Blake. So at halftime, I'm going to say, hey, Mom, guess who's having the best game for Cal? Who? Oh, it's a kid from New Haven. I told you, son, we're the grass. Yep, New Haven, a, a, a good hot spot for lacrosse there. Mm -hmm. good, good hot spot for pizza, too. I'm sure Zach knows that. Have you gotten to play uh, or coach uh, at all on the East Coast in your travels? Coached one tournament there. 
a couple years back over the summer with a club team. Um, we were either we were in the wrong division or our East Coast teams are just that much better. <laughs> Uh, Santa Barbara coming out of the timeout. We've got some pressure from the Bears. Looks like maybe they drew something up to counter whatever the Gauchos wanted. Oh, nice save and, and maybe got kept it from trickling in with the, the effort there at the end. Um, that was 13 Menendez for the Gauchos with the shot. Um, on a nice nice little play there. They got uh, some seals on the backside. And a big, big save. Great job from Shibodi in there to stand that up. That would have been killer out of the timeout and a quick possession. Yeah, Mayer rushed that one right down the field, and then that shot uh, came right between the eyes for Shibodi, but he did not flinch. And again, Santa Barbara going to settle in. Looks like Cal content to uh, keep a shorty on, on Rowe, who's been, he seems to be the initiator for the Gaucho offense. Um, keep a shorty on him and have that slide ready to go. Knowles again with the ground ball to keep possession. Um, and California denying the ball to Isaac Baker. They don't want him to, to get it at the top. Uh, that's the that's Knowles stripped. Uh, it's going to be Berkeley ball coming this way. Nice and methodical, clear, able to find the guy open, leaking across the midfield. And we've got a timeout for the Bears. Uh, I think a good timeout from Coach Webster there. You've been playing a ton of defense. You want to get a nice uh, offensive set here, preferably put a goal in if you're the Bears. Um, been a while since we've seen a settled possession for White. Yeah, it's worth mentioning that you know, Shavodian's part of this, but the entire Gaucho's defense is part of it too. Cal got their 5 nothing lead, and then uh, Santa Barbara's defense has really tightened up. I mean, it's been a long time since Cal has not, they have not been on a run of any kind. Yeah, and Santa Barbara, you know, they jumped into that zone. Um, and historically, they run a tight zone defense. I remember playing them, you know, back in my day. Uh, and, and they are known for a, a zone. They'll drop into it. And, and when you have a history of that, you histor you run it well. You, you are the, the assignments. You know your roles. Um, and really, when you're in a zone, you want to you want to take away the inside shots. Um, so they're crashing on the crease. Of course, the one goal they scored against uh, here recently was an inside shot. Uh, but the zone defense is meant to, to you know, if you're a, if you want to break it from an offensive standpoint, you need heavy shooters from the outside. And Shavodian's up to the challenge today for that. So I think the, the zone defense shows a confidence in their keeper today. Now, when you were playing, did you prefer playing zone or playing man to man in the role? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I think I prefer probably man-to-man. -man. Uh, a little more freedom to throw checks. Uh, if you put the guy in the right spot, you make him go the right way. Uh, you know, your your slide is going to be there if you need it, but you can also get a little more creative with your in zone. You're sharing more responsibility. You have multiple jobs, right? Um, of course, some of the zones that we ran at Cal Poly were pretty uh, pretty wild sometimes, and they you know our coach would let us run a little bit and get be a little more aggressive, which typically in a zone you tend to be. Uh, a little more sunken back. Um, so there's a time and place for a zone. Uh, and we, we definitely put some zones in that gave some teams some trouble. Just tuning in, two goals apiece for Perkins and for Zakhar of California. Bernicke and Kaslow each have one. And Santa Barbara scores in this first half. Their captain Knowles along with Finn Shorak out of Lafayette. In early early signs here say I think uh, Santa Barbara elected to go into a man defense, um, maybe to counteract whatever Coach Webster drew up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the old friends uh, trying to battle in a timeout late in the first 100%. half. 100%. A lot but of times out of timeout, you just want to throw junk. You want to change it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have those issues uh, or, or those uh, fun um, – problems to solve as a coach uh, these days with Los Gatos where it's like ah, they're expecting this I'm going to put this in instead out of the stop. Uh, timeouts are very fun. Timeouts are very fun. You can you can do some things just to to mess with the other team or try to get a little advantage when they think you're going to do one thing and you go the other direction. 
whole key is to have your players execute what you told them in the timeout. That's always the tough part. That is the <laughs> tough part, and especially when you're talking high schoolers. That's Zach Gar with the with the shot. Oh, another another. Uh, you know, sometimes they're called garbage goals there, but I wouldn't call that one a garbage goal. Uh, that's Bernicke picking up after the save, picking up the rebound, and able to put it BTB with a nifty finish. And with that, I have won the race to nifty for today's game. <laughs> Happy to let you win it. And uh, Bernicke, uh, as I said, out of Vermont, studying environmental sciences at Berkeley. It's a great place to study it. And given that he's from Vermont, no surprise that he chose that major. It's a beautiful state, uh, the Green Mountain State, of course. But, yeah, sometimes you're the right person in the right place. Yep. Uh, big dude, definitely has a nose for the ball. Um, he is no stranger to playing the crease. As Berkeley comes up with the ball on the break, got a trailer going to keep possession I think uh, you know we're low time we got 90 seconds left maybe get a shot maybe get a reset and hold for the last uh, possession the difference between the clocks is about 30 seconds so the shot clock still has a minute left on it at 117 of the quarter I have uh, some players in the way here so I cannot tell exactly um, but it seems like uh, Santa Barbara is sticking in their man. Probably finished the half with it. Good back up from the Bears. Caslow with the ball. Mm, dishes up. That was Sonsini with the shot. Second line midi is getting a good run here to finish the half. Jack Ronan with the ball, gets a step, finds Pistotnik, who's not able to handle, but that would have been a, a, a rip there if he got it. Brennan Cook with the ball in the middle, puts it home. Great shot placement in that bottom right corner. Um, and that's a, that's a killer if you're the Gauchos. 30 seconds left in the half. And he may well be there based on his assist total for the half. We uh, will check with the desk on that, but with the goal that puts him over the 200 mark, right? That's absolutely, yeah. He was at 199 points prior to this game, and, and that would be a, a great goal to make his 200th. So it's kind of like, kind of like celebrating a birthday. You know, people time shift their holidays. You know, may, maybe he had his birthday earlier in the, earlier in the half, but we're celebrating it now. He's yeah. at 200 mark for the season. This one's more fun. Ball's coming into the Berkeley end here. You've got a timeout if you want it, coach. Yeah, read your mind. Yep. Uh, we got 14 seconds left there. That's plenty of time to draw something up. Well, they've balanced the scoring. They've, uh, they've, they've gotten, gotten two from a midfielder. They've gotten two from a sophomore attacker, Bernicke. And they've gotten two from the big guy, Zakar. You know, any any sense of what you would draw up here in the final 14 seconds? It shows 14 on the scoreboard there. So you're trying to put yourself in, in the opposing coach's mind. Is he coming out in a zone? Is he coming out in a man? I think either way, you want something. You, you're going to have your line one. Maybe he's out there. I'd probably have Zakar initiate. He's been getting a step. He's a big guy. He'd get that slide. Um, 14 seconds longer than you think, and the ball's going to be probably the top area of this box, so you could swing it to Zach Gar for a quick dodge, maybe up top. Um, if it's there, great. If it's not, then work it behind. Uh, it's either Pistotnik or, or Cook, who can maybe make something happen from X. Um, there's a lot of weapons on for the for the Bears here, so I'm interested to see what they do come out in. But, uh, you know, you really can't go wrong with the ball and any of those guys stick. And as we move toward the end of the half, we'll, we'll be in break, but we'll say right now that according to the board here, the Bears are now leading in the shot total 18 to 14. But the key is, as we were just saying, whatever they've got uh, drawn up from Coach Webster, they're going to need to execute it quickly. Just looking at the way the Gouchers are coming out, I'm guessing zone. They're not necessarily coming out to a person. They're coming out more to an area. Um, so we'll see. Micah Graham starts with it. Over to Zakar, who's taking a shot. Big save from Shavodian. Almost able to pick it up again was Bernicke. Um, and Shavodian's just going to chuck it downfield here uh, to finish the half there. Nice save to preserve uh, 
and not, not necessarily a, a, a good half for the Gauchos, but I think the score is not indicative of how close this game might be. Yeah, a lot to build on for uh, Santa Barbara and head coach Mike Allen as the 24th ranked Gauchos trail the 10th ranked Golden Bears by a count of eight to two. We have reached halftime of our first semifinal here at Dominican University in the WCLL tournament. And we'll be back with more coverage here on Team Stream Games after this. Are you gonna stand right here? Yeah, we'll go right here. John Corbellotti is handling the sideline interviews for us this weekend. He's with Cal coach Ned Webster. Coach Webster, six on six defense looked great. What's changed compared to that last game against Santa Barbara where they scored 14 goals this half? Yeah, I think we're just a little better prepared. Um, we've got Ryan McAvoy back. I think he's our best defenseman. He didn't play in that first game. And um, yeah, I just think we're, we're starting to gel at the right time. Six goal lead going into the second half. Your offense, hasn't really caught a rhythm despite scoring eight goals. How are you going to find that rhythm to take the air out of the game? Yeah, to be honest, I mean, we had rhythm man-to-man, -man, and then they went zone pretty quick. And I think we're starting to find our rhythm, starting to understand what will work and what won't. And, uh, you know, they're a well-coached team. They're an athletic team, smart. So we just got to be um, more athletic and smarter. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, Pat. Thanks to Coach Webster for joining us. Thanks to John Corbellotti, who will be handling the sideline interviews for us throughout the weekend, and we'll be back.
I didn't even see your body. I just saw the head of your face. And I was like, oh, there it is. There, there he is. Yeah. Can you imagine trying to poison another team? That's why we don't play Second half approaching with the Gauchos trailing the Bears 8-2. John Corbelotti is with the Gauchos head coach, Mike Allen. Ryan, your defense has stood tall. What have you liked seeing from them so far? Uh, I think it just took us a second to settle down. We weren't, you know, sadly we weren't at game pace right off the bat, and they took advantage of it and just, you know, got a few quick on us, and we were able to settle down a little bit, uh, get into our defense, and you know, sort of slow the pace down. Now we just need our offense to can a few and, and get this thing close. And speaking of runs, Berkeley went on their two runs. How do you talk to your team going in the second half to get a run of their own just to claw back into the game? I think, uh, you know, shots-wise, we, we made a run, we just didn't finish. So I think that run is in us. We just have to make sure that we're putting. Some of those away and uh, it'll reflect on the score. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Thanks to Coach Allen and also to Coach Webster for joining us uh, here at the interval. We'll return with coverage of half number two in just a moment. Zakar, both those guys Coach Webster tells me to watch out for. Zakar wants to dodge right away. Hard dodge down the alley. Stairs. Um, part of that line one, also Henry Perkins out of Sparks, Maryland. Zakar is going for two mm. straight goals. The crossbar. Finally came down. Mm. Jack Ronan dishes over. Nice save. Mm. On the, the receiver. I think Santa Barbara is in his zone right now. Perkins bounces one home. Uh, third time uh, in his career that he's been first team WCLL. And he's an honorable mention All-American last time they did those. Oh, and uh, draws the early slide. Wants to probably get rid of it here. You don't want to hold on to the ball too, too much. But he finds his. Also. All right, back we go for half number two between the 10th-ranked California Golden Bears, 24th-ranked UC Santa Barbara Gauchos, along with Chris Nespor. I'm Scott Armstrong, and uh, Chris looking forward to a good second half to see if the Gauchos can close this gap. You know it. we got a spot on the line here in the WCLL title game. Obviously the first time in two years that that will be played um, after neither of these teams played a game last year. Um, so excited to, to have uh, uh, some hardware. And uh, we got a six-goal game here. But uh, as we both mentioned in the, the first half, you know, it's closer than that. We just need, or Santa Barbara just needs to, to finish the rock a little bit more. Absolutely. So easy to forget how much college action was truncated or altogether wiped out by the earlier stages of the pandemic. So the phrase, happy to be here, might be trite, but it applies.
Uh, Micah Grimm with the sweep dodge up top. Santa Barbara coming back in that zone. Up to uh, 88, big Zach, uh, Connor Zakar. Good D from the Gauchos to harass that pass from Grimm. And great effort from Zakar. Almost was able to keep the ball in bounds. That's going to go to the Gauchos. That's the start you needed if you're wearing blue. Oh, but that doesn't help, but that does. Ground ball from, from Ryan Fisk. Fisk, honorable mention, WCLL, d -Midi. Showing why there. Baker coming on. We'll run with uh, Dwelly and also Ethan Rowe. So first line middies. Cooper Endicott forcing Rowe down the alley, goes over the head. Oh, Rowe back to the middle there. Coach in me wants to say that's why you don't go over the head, 15. Good job forcing him down the alley, but he chases that, that stick check on the other side, and he's gotten it a couple times actually today to four shots wide. That time though, Ethan Rowe switches back to his left, back to the middle, um, and there's no there's no help there from the, the poles. Yeah, he, he's been knocking on that door since the game started, and I think finally he has uh, been able to uh, gain entry because they have stayed true to that uh, strategy to have him lead the offense. That's Santa Barbara ball after the uh, infraction. Real talk, what percentage of the infractions are you sure of when they're called as a coach on the sideline? Oh. You don't have to give you, – you don't have to answer that. You can you can take the fit. It's fine. Yeah, I think you're going to argue 100% of them. Well, sure. I mean, that's, Regardless that's of whether it's the right call or not, you're going to let the ref know you're not happy with it. Um, there it did look like uh, Wolber had the clamp, um, and they've changed face-off rules so much. You know, at this point, you don't really know what they're going to call. Uh, I think they, they called for withholding there. There's a certain amount of time you can have the ball clamped, the number of steps that you can take. I think they exceeded that limit. Baker going down the alley. Back top side, good roll. Big shot. That's from uh, Camden Dwelly there after the roll back to the middle. That's a good shot if you're the Gauchos. You're happy with it. It is better for your cortisol levels to be able to think through what the call was over here because you're not coaching either of these teams. <laughs> Rowe wants another. Misses just left. He's certainly feeling confident. And I think they probably at halftime told him, hey, you know, keep at it. You'll get your chance. Looks like they're going to get it back to him for another tray here. Pulling his guy nice and high. Gets the separation he wants, but it's his left hand, so I don't know if he's going to push too hard. Good adjacent slide there from the Bears, able to, to put the ball on the ground. Ooh, coma slide, getting a big piece. And we got two Gauchos laying down in the crease. You can hear the coaches say that. Um, regardless, Berkeley ball, we're clearing. Blake finds the open midfielder. That's Dawson Hill. He's gonna run it down and uh, get the ball to his offensive players before he subs off. Grim with the ball down to Cook. Here comes Zakar with the free run. Oh. Unable to push the advantage. Pistotnik. Pistotnik coming in to run with the first line middies. He's been with line two here all day. Um, I think uh, Coach Webster really wants one back here. And he gets one. That's Andrew Caslow with a nice bounce shot through the defense. Now you called it. Pistotnik uh, is on the field, immediate impact, and Caslow gets his second of the day. He was the first scorer of the second period for Cal, and he's the first scorer of the third period for the Bears. Grim, good assist there. Just good job moving the ball through the defense. Um, looked like that shot maybe had a little English on it. Hit the ground and kind of caromed off in a direction the goalie wasn't expecting. 
And we've talked a fair piece about Micah Grimm, but he seems to have been in the middle of a lot of the Bears' goals, whether in early setup or the actual assist man. Yeah, and Grimm, 40 points on the year. Uh, no stranger to it. We got Isaac Schultz, LSM, for the Bears taking the face off here. Um, not sure why, as uh, Wolber's been doing a good job for him. And we got a lot of action. There's the push call the coaches want. It's going to be Berkeley ball. Maybe coach figuring after a goal to put you up by six. Okay, this is a chance to get the kids some experience in a playoff game in that scenario. Not a bad call. Uh, that's uh, Schultz, he's a sophomore, uh, likely eligibility-wise a freshman given, given uh, last year. Uh, so good to get him some runs here in case they do come up against a, a face-off guy that Wolber's not handling. You throw the pole out there. Uh, his job is to you know maybe win if he can, but, but lose the ball and then fight for the possession. Pistotnik with the ball. Kind of looks like uh, Berkeley's running one of their man upsets. Does a little bit of a wheel action, which he can do against his own. Behind the cook. Good ball movement from the Bears. And that's the shot from Deller there. Goes wide. Set up there by uh, Jack Ronan out of uh, Monta Vista and Danville. Very strong program across the board. Deller wants some. Getting a lot of shots for the Bears here. And that did hit the pipe, so it's a shot clock reset. Um, seeing a lot of movement, more, more so than we saw in the first half, especially out of the midfield there. A little bit of weave action, another shot off the pipe, uh, that time from Endicott. Sorry, Perkins. Feed inside to Pistotnik. Too tight, this ball's racing to the midline. If it goes over, that's gonna be Santa Barbara ball. And that was interesting there. You know, they, the, as soon as Santa Barbara picks it up, it should have been an over and back, but when Santa Barbara picks it up, I guess their advantage is then waived. Um, smart play by the defender there to let the Gauchos pick it up. Uh, and of course, the ball, the ball wasn't picked up cleanly, so it goes back to the Bears. In that situation, maybe the Gaucho player thinks about waiting for it to come to rest or maybe go out of play. What do you think there? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, your, it's your ball. It's over and back, it's your ball. Uh, I think maybe you let it go out of bounds. Maybe you, you accept the play on advantage. Uh, it would have been a tough ground ball in that corner, but ball don't lie, and Gau Gaucho's come up with it. That's uh, Riker Bergstein throwing off some moves, showing off some moves. Oh, interesting check attempt there. Um, that was Devin Enos there, wanted to go over the head a little bit. Um, and they do finally harass the ball carrier enough to put the ball on the ground. Perkins pushing. Ooh, did not see that defender. His stick's on the ground. We're going the other way. Looks to be uh, Jake Brandon with the ball. Dishes it over, open shot, cashes it. Jake Knowles, that's captain to captain. Brandon to Knowles, and uh, it's just a great ride there. I, I hope this highlight shows all the way from the ride when, uh, uh, who was it, Perkins had the ball, didn't see the defender. He gets jarred up a little bit. Um, and then uh, Brandon pushed the uh, push transition the other way and is able to find his, his captain there in, in Knowles. Yeah, you appreciate that the defense created the offense there. You know, sort of almost a blind side, even though he's coming right into Brandon. Brandon sees the opportunity that, hey, this guy doesn't see me coming. I'm going to be able to dislodge it. And then goes on the break and, and hooks up with his partner Knowles there for a, a big goal for Santa Barbara. That's uh, Schultz again on the faceoff, and he's doing his job. He's mucking it up, and he comes up with the ground ball. Up top to Endicott, who rolls around his defender, and we're settled. First line middies coming in for Berkeley. If the Zachar. Santa Barbara scores next, it would be their smallest deficit of the afternoon since Cal built the 5-0 lead. There's some, something going on in the sub game here. Berkeley, that's twice in a row they've, they've had an advantage from the midline uh, when, it, when it seems that it, it shouldn't be the case. It's, it's settled plenty, that ball, or, or you should have your subs in. Uh, and they've, you know, that time the shot goes off the pipe, they don't pay for it. Big hit coming. Grim. Possesses, able to get it to the attack. Go, 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 
here comes Deller. Again, no one really picks him up. He's coming from the midline and no one wants him. Now they're gonna go try and sub. Quick push, six on five advantage. And that's why they needed to sub that guy off. They had too many men on the field. We're gonna get 30 second man up for the Bears. And keenly noticing that they were having some personnel shifts and uh, maybe uh, not on the same page. And eventually the officials picked up on it, led to the flag. I think sometimes when it's back and forth like that, we had three or four times we're getting whiplash in the booth, um, just watching the ball go from one side to the other. It, you can lose some guys. You can lose track uh, how many guys are on the field. And of course, you can only have six on one side there. Uh, they had too many. Looks like a 3-1-2 with a little bit of an umbrella there. Zach Gar, nice bounce. Uh, that starts with the skip pass from, uh, I believe, who's that over there? What's that number? Uh, I think that was Hires with the, uh, oh no, sorry, that's Grim. Uh, with the skip pass across. Finds Zach Gar, face dodge, gets under. Nice bounce shot there. High bouncers will go and created by an administrative error on the part of the Gauchos to create the man up, and that's third goal of the day for Zakhar. 10-4 for the Bears. You're feeling comfortable, but we still got a quarter and a half to go here, and six goal runs happen in lacrosse. So you need to keep the, the gas pedal down and, and not let up. Gentle breeze on the field here, but, uh, but nothing I think that's going to affect the players too much. Uh, been fortunate to have... Uh, light winds here today. There have been some very heavy winds in the Bay Area the past couple of weeks. Schultz with a good ground ball. Um, nice check from the Gauchos to, to uh, affect the pass, but Grimm comes up with it. Here comes Deller again. Seems to be unmarked. Pistotnik skips across, good stick from the Gauchos. Bouncing around, Grimm comes up with it. Here's ground ball offense, we move it to the other side and we go. Oh, and the ball off the pipe, 30 feet in the air. Comes down for the Bears, Deller able to come up with it. Still with Grimm, back to Grimm. Lefty rip, low to low, doesn't go. Yeah, Grimm deserved one there. He's been such a facilitator so far. Sonsini was the one who uh, struck the crossbar there moments ago. He had all 155 pounds of his frame behind that shot. It's a big shot. Mm -hmm. Cook with the dodge up to Sonsini. Deller back to Cook. And you hear the bench calling for one more. It's there. Nice check. Nice check on the crease there to prevent Pistotnik from catching the ball. They've got Santa Barbara extended a bit here. Grimm dodges under, puts it back in his left, again misses wide. He's trying to make the left-handed shot, but coming in from the right alley, and I think that Santa Barbara's able to say, okay, well, he's not going to be able to slip that under us. We're going to shift and cover the, the front of the goal of the crease. Deller, big rip, off stick, low, tough place for the goalie to get. That corner's been open. You know, we've said it a couple, that that's where the shots have been, that big shot off the pipe, the, the couple looks there. Seems that this zone is, is not really working uh, for the couches as well. Credit to the, the Cal coaching staff for drawing up something to counteract it, and it is uh, clearly working. All right, that seems to be a sweet spot there where if they can, they can reach that hole in the zone, uh, that has uh, created Great opportunities for them, and they have uh, they've capitalized on those. They're the leader in shots right now, and they're leading by seven. As you say, comfortable position right now for the Golden Bears. Wolber showing off why he's first team all league faceoff. Secures possession again, and, and this is just the slow, slow death that you want if you're the Bears. Yeah, you want to hold it at arm's length because you're, you're not thinking necessarily about Sunday yet. You want to close this game out, but on the other hand, you've built this lead and you're able to use the entire shot clock probably at this point to shorten the game and and uh, get all your personnel some serious time on the field. Another shot generated over there on that, that corner there. That's Kaslow. I 
think that's what you want. You need long possessions, and the way that the Bears are moving the ball, they are finding open spots. So you're happy with an 80-second possession with moving the ball and keeping the defense going, keeping them guessing, and then and then attacking at that 10-second mark uh, with a well with a, a quality shot. Of as course, we, they turn the ball over yeah. there. As we say, that unforced there. Do you believe in the announcers, Jinx? Because I don't. Although this close <laughs> to the bench is, I might. <laughs> they can't actually hear us. We're sitting right at Cal bench, so keep that in mind. But they're not paying attention to us. I certainly hope not. They should be focused on the game. Yeah, they, uh, their ears are going elsewhere right now, as they should be. Another big save, Blake. Here comes Schultz on a break. Finds Cook over to Pistotnik. Almost was able to roll back topside and get a look. As a long stick, how did you like how Schultz kind of handled that over to Pistotnik? I think he did it right. Uh, there's a, a sweet spot on the field as you're coming down where if you're close enough, you are either got to shoot it or, or make the easy pass there. Typical transition, right? You're going you're gonna to draw a defender and work it across the top if you're running that L break. Um, that was non-traditional coming off a of clear, uh, and he, he just passed it down to the attackman. But it's still a break, and the defense is still rotating, and they were able to, I think he went to Cook first and then Cook over to Pistotnik. Um, that, was, that was a good break. They got a good look out of it. Yeah, this is a, maybe a chance for Cal to work on some things as uh, the time lessens in period number three, a turn to the fourth. They still have this big lead. You might see them uh, get a little creative, see what they can do, flesh out their resume. Cook up top to Deller. Another one off the pipe. The Bears are hunting right now. I think they feel like that spot over uh, Shavodian's left shoulder is an open place. They've gotten a couple of goals that way. Could work from the Bears' poles to, to collect that rebound and get it back to their offense. Of course, that comes with a fresh shot clock. Another shot off the pipe. Low to high rip from Pistotnik. Gauchos coming the other way. Bergstein with the ball. Down seven. You got 16 minutes left. We're going to need to go here. Rose the guy to do it. Dodges middle. Keeps it in his right. Nothing doing. Works it up to the top. And I think that shot got uh, deflected or, or slowed down a little bit in there before Blake was able to get his stick on it. And Baker had the right idea, though. You know, he tried to, to skip that one through, uh, which been a very you know, tight group right around the crease in front of Zach Blake. We got Bears ball. Less than a minute in the third quarter. I think we're holding for last shot. Which is probably the right time for them to just go right away. Right, what do I know? All right, a long a a possession does can still be an active possession in terms of moving the ball around looking for an open space. Zach Gar with the ball up top. The clocks are identical, so they can take this down if they want. Perkins up to Zach Gar, over to Michael Grimm. He's going for a lefty sweep. He's got Zachar one more. Back to Grimm. Big shot up top. Just misses right. Zachar's like, I got my hat trick. And that's on for you, my guy. Get you on the board. Skip. Zachar, lefty. High to high. Nice save, Shvodian. That would have been another one that hit the pipe. Oh, big, big interception there. Athletic play. Pistotnik at the, at the buzzer there. Big play. What was that? Oh, number 11, Micah Grimm, uh, able to inter uh, intercept that pass one-handed up there. A little, little bit of OBJ action. Sure, OBJ, I'd appreciate that. And uh, Micah Grimm, you know, for my money, maybe the, uh, the best Cal player who hasn't scored here today other than uh, Blake, the goalkeeper, because he's just been so, so strong on the attack. And then, uh, uh, you know, with that play there, you know, how often are you able to, as a player, uh, get a get a, an interception like that when it looked like the other team is going the other way and you just every 
every bit of your apex are able to knock that down and create a new offensive opportunity. Yeah, those are killer because the rest of you know the other team is a expecting that ball to get through, expecting to to have it and maybe push transition the other way, and then oh. stick comes out of nowhere uh, and, and obviously prevents that. Yeah, Micah Grimm from Coronado has uh, just had a tremendous game in first team all league. I'd be curious to see how many assists he has. Uh, he has definitely been uh, involved in the scoring for this team. Scores, I'll uh, recap those. Of course, you know, here on the live stream, it's a it's a weekend. Folks might be coming in and out of our our coverage here. Cal uh, leaped out to a five nothing lead in the first, and uh, it's been a fairly even game since then. But the the big lead that Cal has been able to operate with has has made a huge difference. Of course, uh, Zachar has three, Perkins and Caslow and Bernicke all with two. Deller and Cook have a goal apiece for California. And for UCSB, your scorers are Rowe and Chorak and Knowles, the captain, with a pair of goals for the Gauchos. But you look back on it, there's still a quarter to play. It's, it's not over yet, of course. But, you know, Ethan Rowe has been the guy that they, they think has been able to get them back into this game and unfortunately just not, has not been able to connect more than once. Yeah, and I, I think the, the difference that, you know, that quarter, I would say Cal won that quarter, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, but... They're possessing the ball. They're winning the face-offs, uh, and, and they're they're punching back. Santa Barbara came out. They scored the first goal of the third, um, and Cal answered. And Santa Barbara scored, and then Cal answered twice. Um, and they're just not letting the Gauchos fight back uh, the way that they need to if they want uh, if they want the uh, result to be different than what it is right now. So it's not over yet, but as we predicted coming into it, uh, Cal uh, top seed. Uh, I think around the country folks would say that uh, Cal would be the team to go through, and they have played like it in this one. Uh, Gauchos have come up with a game effort, but uh, Cal's class has just shown. Isaac Schultz, LSM, back on the faceoff. And he's going for the win there, not content to lose it, but if he does, he's harassing ball carrier. And errant pass. And Jackson Gilmore there. Ball's going to go to the Bears. And you see uh, around the field, Pistotnik on the other side yelling for the team to settle. They are in no need to push the ball right now. What's the biggest deficit at this level you've seen a team come back from entering the fourth quarter? Ooh, I, off the top of my head, I, I couldn't tell you there. But, uh, you know, the, the nice thing I tell people, the nice thing about watching lacrosse is really most games – at least the you know college level NCAA is the Bears get another one there. Most games end up coming down to the last six minutes. I would say this uh, this deficit at the rate that the the Bears have been possessing the ball and and the struggles that the Gauchos have showed offensively, this would be impressive. Uh, but a six goal deficit in the fourth, not not uncommon. And Pistotnik gets his first. As you mentioned in our notes. Most decorated player on the field, so for him to score in uh, what's shaping up to be a definitive win for the Bears, no surprise there. Yeah, and Pisto, as the boys call him, uh, you know, only 36 points this year. He had a hamstring injury that kept him out for many games, uh, but obviously still a, a dominant player, uh, and he's going to win his one-on-one -on -one matchups, and he's going to put the ball on the back of the net. Menendez. Goes for it. Uh, big, big swim dodge to get to his left hand. You know, he operates well from X. Knowles picks it up after the backup. Baker unable to shake his defender. Rowe wants it. Again, goes high there, and, uh, and Blake able to make the save. Uh, I have yet to see... Ethan Rowe shoot the ball low, and I think that, that maybe Keeper is on, onto that as well. He's a big, big shoot high kind of guy. You had mentioned uh, in the first half how a whole season of film can make a difference as to how a coach will game plan it, and Ned Webster has appeared to have his team ready for a number of the uh, different looks that the Gauchos have given his defense. Yeah, and Jack Ronan there, uh, as the Bears just gained possession, uh, elects to go for it and get him some. Uh, Drops the ball on his shot attempt, but Brandon Cook able to chase it down after Santa Barbara uh, fails their clear. 
And we can see Cook settle in. Content for that shot clock to, to keep on ticking. Santa Barbara, of course, played Cal close back in February. Close loss to Concordia as well. And you know, this has uh, been a club that has uh, had a winning record under Mike Allen. His 11th year coaching the program overall. Yeah, that one hurts. That one hurts. I think you see it in the body language of the Gauchos uh, as things start to settle in here. Uh, tough to come back, of course. Great slip again, Pistotnik just coming off the crease, finding open areas. And, and Cal, of course, known for their, their crease players, uh, guys that just know where to go. They know how to follow a slide and get their hands free. Dropped off to him on that play by Joe Sonsini. Now the Sacred Heart prep. Sh Schultz winning it behind. Fighting for the ground ball. And Gilmore remaining in there as their main faceoff guy as he has been throughout the year. At a Berlin game high or B game as they call it. discussing whether possession was called and if so whether someone could release out of the box there we go, <laughs> to me it looked like uh, I don't know if there was possession but it sure looked like the ball came out of Santa Barbara's stick and rolled out of bounds the refs disagree it looks like they're going to give the ball to Santa Barbara well if you're going to have a call like that better to have it in a 13-4 to four game than uh a <laughs> 13 to 12 game here in the fourth quarter of a playoff. That's one where uh, if it maybe is a closer game, maybe they reface, maybe they go AP, alternate possession, which is something you could select uh, at the coin toss at the beginning of the game. But uh, in a nine goal game like this, maybe it's a, a little bit of a, a call to give the Gauchos a chance. Big slide, nice job from Ethan Pavlet. Uh, able to get the stick check. We're pushing transition the other way. That's Lima. We had two poles playing offense there, and uh, when that happens, some sometimes you want the pole to get the ball and you want the pole to get the goal. Uh, that time, uh, they just weren't ready for it, weren't able to connect. All right, as you said in the third, Cal, uh, having built this big lead, uh, probably able to, to get a little more creative here in the final stages and uh, try for some things that maybe they wouldn't in a closer game. Uh, restart here. Nice pass from the keeper there. Gaucho's ball. Turn it down with the ball. That's Captain Zach Brannon. Jake Brannon, excuse me. Got to go to Cage here. Unable to connect with his teammate, Knowles. Smartly going behind, going back with the ball. Often when you when you pick up the ground ball like that and you're going upfield, it's tempting to keep going. Uh, but you get pressure in your face. It's a smart, smart decision to just roll back there, use your defenders, use space, and, and clearly works out for them there. They secure the ball on their offensive side of the field. If you're a Cal player right now, you're saying, okay, looks like we have this one in the bag. Uh, how do you stay motivated for these last 10 minutes? I think these guys are motivated. You can see some numbers out there that maybe haven't been out as much today. And, mm -hmm. and these guys want to get theirs and they want to play uh, because in their eyes, right, they're going to keep playing for a while here. So they want to they want as much experience as possible. Um, as we've got number five dodging through, that's Liam Picola. Pistotnik still out there to help supervise, help direct traffic. Also with Cook still on the field. So you got your two big dogs still out there, but you're running some of your younger guys. You're getting them experience. Um, and so when you are when you haven't been on the field as much, it's easy to stay motivated. I know all about that. <laughs> I, as my dad would say, I often played left out. Cook finding Pacola on the backside, takes a shot, just misses wide. I'm hearing maybe eight seconds, seven seconds on the shot clock. I can see it. Yep. 
If they get a quick jam to the crease. That was a shot from Jaro. Misses wide and it's gonna be Santa Barbara ball on the shot clock reset. Not on the reset, sorry, shot clock violation. And that can't happen if you're the Gauchos there. Just unpressured, unpressured and uh, missing high, throwing the ball high, throwing the ball out of bounds. Uh, and Coach Allen's gonna call a timeout, try and get his boys settled here for the last nine minutes. Well, folks, certainly hope, of course, you're coming back and, and joining us for semifinal number two. That's Cal Poly and Santa Clara. And uh, if you kindly would uh, maybe give us, Chris, a little bit of an overview of semifinal number two between Mustangs and Broncos. Sure. So these teams, these two two horses, uh, Mustangs and Broncos. Exactly. I, 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 that thought went through my head, too. Okay, this is an all equine matchup in go. semifinal number two. Yeah, these teams played, uh, I think, maybe about two weeks ago over in Santa Clara, um, and Cal Poly came out on top 15 to 10. Um, and and it was it was a good matchup. It was close for the majority of the game, and Cal Poly went on a run in the third quarter. Um, Santa Clara's goalie, who I believe was first team all league, I don't have that paper in front of me right now, um, but they they sport the you know the top goalie in the league according to the voters. Um, so I think that's going to be the difference maker. Uh, he last time they played, uh, let's see, we're going to find his goalie right now. Mm. Lewis Harvey for Santa Clara. He was first team all league. Um, and last time when they played, he actually had his worst game of the season against Cal Poly. So if he fixes that, right, it's going to be a much closer game. Um, and I expect a battle. Uh, you know, Cal Poly is the higher seed. Santa Clara will come in hungry having lost the last matchup. Um, and Santa Clara has got a good faceoff guy and a good goalie. And if you got that, you could stay in most games. Yeah, Lewis Harvey, the former Bellarmine Bell, didn't have to go very far to continue his lacrosse career. Okay. Pretty short drive from SCU to the Bellarmine campus. Curious to see how much hotter it gets here. Santa Clara, their away jerseys used to be black. I'm not sure if they've uh, changed that and gone red now. Uh, but Cal Poly has the, the higher seed. They'll be wearing their whites. Uh, I'm curious to see if the heat, you know, with the black jersey, it does, it does impact your game a little bit um, as heat normally would. And a speed dodge from Cook right off the reset. And he lets the boys know that that was a pure strength play right there, right through the Gaucho defense. Second goal of the game for Cook. So six different players have scored multiple goals today for California. Poor slide angle from the Gauchos there when Cook's dodging at you. That's a, that's a big dude coming downhill. Um, when you're down nine goals, maybe a little harder to get in the way. Of course, down 10 now, as our scoreboard will update here shortly. Ball's up, and no one knows where it is except for that Jackson Gilmore for the Gauchos. See if the boys in blue can get something here. Uh, you know, likely finishing their last game of the season. They want to finish on a high note, and they want to want something to look back on about this game that they did enjoy. So they're they're still playing. We got a lot of seniors out here playing potentially their last games, and this is not the way they want to go out as Roe finds it. Yes, uh, and and. Uh, Good on you to latch on to that point that uh, Mike Allen's probably going to put a lot of seniors on the field here in the final few minutes to get them some action if they haven't already played a lot in this game. You would hope so. You would hope so, especially after the turmoil of the last couple years. These guys deserve their time. We don't know what their eligibility situation looks like. We don't know if they're going to stay in school and, and keep playing. So uh, let these guys enjoy their, their time on the field while they got it. Of course, I was talking to him before the game, and he, he did mention that they're a very young team. Um, so I don't know off the top of my head how many seniors they do have. Uh, and I wouldn't want you to, to hurt your brain having to think about that because we are in the world of the transfer portal, and I understand this is club sports, but all the same, you know, there could be some folks coming back, even with a senior affixed to their name. Shabodian coming out of the cage there as his defender was hung up, lays a big check there, uh, unable to get the ball to his defender. I do like this from the Gauchos. They're not backing down. They're still playing physical. 
They're not gonna just bend, lay over. Low time in the shot clock, flip pass to the middle, almost connects. I think shot clock expired. Good outlet from Shabodian. Couchers are pushing. My apologies to any fans out there. We do have a new, go new goalie in for the Bears. Uh, that's uh, Andy Harris, number 21 in net. I didn't see when he came in, uh, but he's been in for a while. He's been doing a good job because we haven't said his name much. Yeah, I believe that is a fairly recent change by uh, by Coach Webster. We, we appreciate anybody uh, who noticed it first. <laughs> uh, giving us the uh, leeway. And there you go, right there. And Andy Harris uh, making the stop out of Bethesda, Maryland. Not an easy, uh, not an easy stop either. That's uh, that was Jake Knowles with a big high to low rip from from the middle of the field, and when you see that much cage, there's a lot of places you can put it. Um, and Harris able to make the save, but does turn it over on the clear. Santa Barbara coming back, and that's 13. Menendez able to put one past. You see, uh, you see Harris there tapping his head. He knows that's on him, and that's all right. A valuable experience. And uh, as you pointed out in our buildup during the week, he did play all of the last game against Dominican, which was Cal's final uh, table setter prior to this uh, contest here today. Yeah. Typed in that box wrong. I don't have what, uh, what year in school Andy is. But uh, good for him to get in this game. Uh, good on Coach Webster for getting all as many bodies as he can in here. He is listed as a senior on okay. the... Uh, MCLA website. All right, well, you love to see that then. Eligibility, he is a junior, but uh, obviously uh, getting some more experience here uh, for California toward the end of the campaign. This, uh, by our count, is the seventh game he has played for California since 2019, two in 2019, and the fifth one this year. Good patience from Harris. 20 seconds is a long time. Nice push from, uh, that's Fisk there again, making plays in the transition game. Finds Knowles. Knowles gonna skip it across there, see if they can get a shot quickly. Five and a half minutes left. Jorak going from X. They're still subbing, they don't have their numbers here quite yet. There's a veto coming in. Takes his lefty shot, missing left. All right, we've got ball coming in. Caucho ball. Dwelly going to take a dodge. Oh, tipped off the defender there on a shot from Knowles. And I misspoke. Harris has played in most of Cal's games this year. I was looking at the wrong part of the stat sheet. See, see garbage time here is giving us a chance to uh, reveal to the audience our ignorance, but I think we'll live. Big rip there. Go ahead. Camden Dwelly able to put one home. Good, good for him getting on the stat sheet here as a freshman. In WCLL playoff game, um, you know, this will be, like we've been saying, experience for them to draw back on. All right. Scott, if you had to pick a player here um, for, for Berkeley that really stood out, who would you who would you say is player of the game? We've got goal scorers. We've got, uh, you know, goalie making a lot of saves there with Zach Blake. But who stood out to you? You know, I'll go back to a comment I made earlier. You know, we talk about Micah Grimm, you know, facilitating a lot of the offense, and he seemed to be everywhere. May not show up in the stat sheet other than in assists, and we'll, of course, uh, receive that information uh, in, in post game from the desk. Uh, but I, I liked his effort. Um, you, you enjoyed seeing uh, Zachar put his stamp on the game very early. He's coming right in and throwing some thundering shots uh, through the cage. Uh, and then Zach Blake, uh, I think, really sort of your hero of the first half because if Santa Barbara had been able to pour in a number of goals and keep this close, we might be having a different discussion right now about the second half. But Cal, building the big lead, been able to sit on it the whole game. They've never trailed uh, by any fewer than uh, five, as I understand it. Yeah, I would agree with that one. You know, looking at just our goal scorers there, it's, it's well spread out. That's great offense. 
Um, looking at the scoreboard, I see Santa Barbara 25 shots and six goals. So that means you got 19 saves out of Blake. Um, and, and like you said, in that first quarter, that first half, when Santa Barbara was getting those looks and he's making those doorstop saves, that changes the game. So I, I would I would give it to Blake there. Right, and, and you know you wouldn't often say, okay, well the goalie is uh, is is your main man in a game you're going to win 14 to six or roughly by that score. But uh, all the same, the fact that Cal was able to lay back, relax, play defense, play that tight zone, and then Blake coming up with some key stops after Santa Barbara had come and played a very strong late first quarter, early second quarter. Yeah, and likewise to the on the Berkeley end there, uh, Santa Barbara able to get one of their senior goalies in. That's Jason Folsom out of Oceanside. Uh, getting some, some game time here to finish out our quarterfinal number one. Shot clock expires. Santa Barbara will pick it up on the end line. That reminds me, I need to call my friends in Oceanside. Thank you. I'm glad Jason's in the game. Good people to know. <laughs> they, they are. Rowe still running fast. Skip over, nice save from Harris, right off his face mask. Jake Knowles is the senior, he's getting his run here at the end of his career, possibly. Get another one, there you go. Good move from Jake, ISO in, ISO dodge from behind, able to get top side and just rip that stick. Uh, you know, they say the stick has eyes. When you take a shot like that, you kind of get your stick up field. Uh, you may not have the best angle, but your stick is two feet out in front of you. Your stick can whip around and find that far pipe. And he seemed determined to go ahead and pierce the net one more time. He's still fired up. You know, game with three minutes left that his team is uh, not going to win. So you love to see that kind of uh, passion, determination right down to the very last. No question about it. And I'll throw the question back at you. I, I, I you, you agree that, uh, you know, Blake, uh, probably uh, main man of the first half. Uh, who shined for you today for Santa Barbara in what appears to be a losing effort? Who'd you like? I think you have to say Ethan Rowe. Uh, we've said his name a lot and, and seems to be the guy who, who they go to to really create on offense. Um, maybe maybe not goal scorers. I know he's got one today, uh, but he is consistently dodging down the alley, uh, drawing slides, looking to create for his teammates who are working on the backside. So I'd give it to number two, sophomore, out of Ashburn, Ethan Rowe. Yeah, again, these two teams play close at the start of the season. You say, well, maybe they play ten times. Cal might win seven or eight, maybe nine. Uh, but uh, Santa Barbara certainly, for stretches of this game, played well enough to say it could have been in their day. If maybe some bounces go their direction. You'd also made the point uh, at the beginning of the show that, you know, the 50-50 plays. Cal was uh, just seeming to be more confident in making uh, some more of those. Also, maybe a fewer unforced errors as well. Yeah, the unforced errors were big. I think in that third quarter when they're trying to come back, we had a, we had, we had a, a, a goal to start the game or to start that third quarter. And then in the next couple possessions, they didn't really generate anything or at least anything quality. Uh, and then unforced turnovers in the clearing game, on inability to connect on the crease. Um, and, of course, the, the first quarter, um, the amount of shots that they just hit the goalie, I think, changes the game. But they're a young team, and they'll be back. They're not going anywhere. Coach Allen always has his boys ready to play. Um, so expect these guys to be just as competitive, if not more so, next year. And they've got Chavodian in goal. You already talked about you've seen him play a lot, and uh, he's coming back. And we had a shot uh, taken as time expired. Uh, Folsom able to make that save. Finds Gomez, who's going to push it upfield. Mm, pushes it into the, the Bears uh, stick there, 17 with it. Takes a jump shot, big save. Nice job there from Folsom uh, as Marshall Wisner was, was looking to put his stamp on the game. Still is throwing checks on the ride. And the ball's going out of bounds and uh, looks to be going to Santa Barbara. We're under a minute here in San Rafael. Look for Santa Barbara to just get shots on cage. They're not going to just run this out. Oh, 
we say a lot of names uh, when we have uh, you know some of our, our third line guys on the offensive end, but on the defensive end too, Berkeley able to get some of their players in. Um, of course, they will have a game tomorrow, so saving some of their legs for tomorrow's uh, matchup, whoever it ends up being. Uh, nice job there on the backside, finding, I think that was Sawyer Essaboy uh, with the finish. I didn't see who got the assist. Uh, but, but again, this, this experience for these younger guys or guys who aren't on the field to start the game is valuable. You've got to learn from this stuff when you're uh, in, even in this quote-unquote garbage time. And I'll give credit to Jake Knowles as well. He was the one who facilitated the throw to uh, Sawyer Essaboy for the goal, Essaboy out of Arinda uh, in the East Bay. And Knowles seemed just as fired up to give the assist as he was to score his goal earlier in the period. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's, Sawyer, that's Essaboy's fourth goal in the year. So, so Knowles was able to help his boy out there, um, get him on the score sheet in a postseason game. Uh, and I think he, you know, that he's going to fire up. Uh, good on Knowles. I've seen a lot of fight out of him in this fourth quarter, even as things uh, haven't gone their way. He's still playing hard, and, and he's given everything he's got for this team. Going the other way after some uh, extracurriculars at the midline, we had Justin Radati was able to find... Uh, I actually didn't see who finished there. We'll see on the replay. That's the, the replay will, will set us free. <laughs> All right, Radati finds 18. That's Thor 08. O's, O's. Thor getting on the board. You know, I mentioned my friends in Oceanside a minute ago. Guess where one of them is from? That's right. Uh, Thor O's from Apple Valley, Minnesota. I kid you not. These connections, you know, just really, I, what can I say? I love maps. I'm, I'm a total geography nerd. Uh, that's great to see him get on the score sheet. And again, uh, Radati as well setting that up in the final seconds. And there's the final buzzer as the teams will go out to congratulate their goalies on a game well played. California comes out on top 15-8, to eight, and they will await the winner of our next game here between Cal Poly and Santa Clara. Yes, as uh, you said, uh, Cal uh, coming in is the favorite, and uh, this was a 5 nothing game very early. It ended up a seven-goal game. Uh, Santa Barbara gave us some things to build on for next year. Uh, they can say that uh, they played this Cal team close early in the season and then late, a gutty effort, but uh, Cal just a little too much today. Absolutely, and those five, that five-goal run to start the game is, is tough to come back from, and you need to string together defensive stops, and the Gauchos just unable to do so. Though their defense did tighten up, um, they weren't able to pour in the goals that were needed. Cal Poly and Santa Clara are set to face each other in semifinal number two coming up at 2 p.m. local time. That's 2 p.m. Pacific, so we hope you'll stay with us on Team Stream Games for that. Uh, thanks to Chris Nespor and our entire crew. And uh, we may have some post-game interviews for you. Uh, if so, stay tuned for those. Uh, but otherwise, we hope you'll stick on the stream throughout the afternoon. Scott Armstrong saying thanks for watching. Our final score one more time from Dominican University. California defeats UC Santa Barbara 15-8 to in semifinal number one. So long.